the Toyota Land Cruiser starting its debut back in 1958, which is now the base trim of three different tiers that you can option for 2024. This is the first edition in brown sugar metallic. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rods, and I'm going to go over the pros and cons and the problem that I have with the new gen, starting with the FJ design style for the front. You get the heritage grille with the Toyota badging that goes into a full LED front fascia. And the first edition in the Land Cruiser will We'll have the rigid LED fog lights with front parking sensors. You can option a 360 degree reverse camera on the Land Cruiser, but the 1958, you cannot option it. Ground clearance has decreased to 8.3 inches opposed to the 8.7 that was standard last year. Plus dropping that V8, we have lost horsepower, but we've gained 64 pound feet of torque. We're also 1.2 inches shorter and 4.4 inches less in width. Dropping the V8, not even optioning a six cylinder, but we will receive the iForce Max four cylinder. That's a 2.4 liter producing 326 horsepower and 465 pound feet of torque paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission, achieving 22 MPGs for the city, 25 MPGs for the highway, and going from the V8 to this four-cylinder, we have dropped in towing capabilities because that was over 8,200 pounds. Now we're at 6,000 pounds max. You have to go up into the GX in order to get the near 10,000 pounds of towing. We have the upgraded 265, 70, 18-inch wheels on all four corners, so when you're thinking rock crawling, you could still tackle that with the Land Cruiser and going into the first edition, you get the rock rails, the skid plates with the first edition badging in the rear, the roof racks, the gloss black elements that's going to just touch here and there on the side, including the side view mirrors and the door handles. But some problems that I have with this is we've decreased in towing, we've decreased in payload, no longer offering a third row variant. They're basically pushing you into a GX, but then the pricing for the first edition doesn't suggest that. The Land Cruiser is the sweet spot because you can option nearly all the features you can get with the first edition and have a little bit of savings. The 1958 is awesome because it's under 60K. When you're thinking a Land Cruiser, that's a pretty decent discount. LED taillights, the lower gets the rear parking sensors with 360 degree reverse camera and a digital rear view mirror. And check out what that 360 degree reverse camera can do. When you put it to do off road, now you have your pinch and roll and you can see on the sides, you can also expand this so that way you can see a little bit more and then just put it into regular driving mode for the 360 degree reverse camera. Keeping the traditional Land Cruiser styling for the rear in which it does look a little bit different than the GX. It's just, they're giving all the bells and whistles when you go into the Lexus and then they're taking the new Land Cruiser. All of the new Land Cruisers have the ability to open up this to make it easy to just throw in anything. And when you go up to the Land Cruiser in the first edition, you have a power lift gate that goes into nearly 38 cubic feet of storage. And I have a 12 volt charger, USB ports and cup holders, which is a con to me because we do not have a third row, but yet you can see this is clearly carved out for a third row. Underneath the floor has compartments of storage on all areas. This one here unfolds. And to split fold the rear bench, you do have to go into the back and simply pull the levers. It's gonna fold all the way up or you could have it folded downwards and you'll have maybe about two inches of a difference between the actual floor in the second row. Twelve way power seat adjustment for the driver, eight way power seat adjustment for the passenger, heated ventilated seats, leather wrap with manual cushion extensions for the driver with memory for the driver. The Land Cruiser keeps the traditional box, so headroom's not gonna be an issue, nor is leg space. A moonroof with a manual sunshade that is an option on the Land Cruiser, 14 speakers through JBL sound system, which is also part of the premium package upgrade if you go into the Land Cruiser, as well as the heads up display. Now these features here are standard on the first edition as well as the digital rear view mirror, but it's nice that you can option it on the tier underneath it. A 12.3 starts on the Land Cruiser. You will not be able to option this size screen on the 1958. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, Audio with a 360 degree reverse camera. Front and rear parking sensors is standard on all trims. The trajectory will expand and you can take the trajectory off. 
and you can also change the way the layout is. And a favorite feature, push this view here, and now you have your bird's eye view, so you can see all around the vehicle. You can also pause it, and you can change so that way you have a more wide profile of the exterior. Tri-climate control is standard. Heated and ventilated seats for the front will be a premium package for the Land Cruiser, as well as a wireless charging pad standard here is an option for the Land Cruiser. Driving mode select on the 12.3 digital gauge reader. So you have your sport, your normal, and your eco. Deep snow, mud, sand, dirt, or auto. So you have a ton of different driving modes when you go up to the first edition with a leather wrap steering wheel. It's heated, multi-function, and this is equipped with Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 with pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert with steer assist, full speed range dynamic radar cruise control, lane tracing assist, road sign assist, automatic high beams, proactive driving assist. 14 speakers through JBL sound system. Circular air vents are going to be on both sides with the rectangular vents in the center. And I like how they do a two part because it more or less makes this seamless. And we still receive a button to turn on and off the sound system as well as buttons for the standard tri-climate control settings. And check this thing out. When you put it to do off-road, now you have your pinch and roll and you can see on the sides, you can also expand this so that way you can see a little bit more and then just put it into regular driving mode for the 360 degree reverse camera. Leather around the shifter and the key fob for the new Land Cruiser. The disconnect switches, driving mode switches here and for your daily use driving mode, it's gonna be soft to touch, opens up into a cool box, which is an option on the Land Cruiser and you can turn it on and off and that's going to basically use the air condition. There isn't any pass through or any sleeves. The door and the dashboard configuring together. The first edition gets the badging here and it's soft to touch. One touch up and down for the windows and a long storage pocket. For the back seats, this is the standard sit, but you can recline it back because we don't have an option for a third row. Behind both of the seats is gonna receive storage. Third climate control, USB, 12 volt, no option for heated seats, armrest with cup holders, and the door is going to have the same segment in the front so you get the first edition badging software it needs to be with a little bit smaller storage pocket. Air vents are going to be stationed in the ceiling, sliding into the center. The floor isn't completely flat, but the rails are pushed up enough. You will be sharing a touch of feet space, but not much. The same thing with leg, butt, and shoulder space. For the most part, you don't have an issue. I'm at six foot three, but sitting in this position, my head is going to be against the headliner. So what I would recommend is tell the person on the right side, just move it back a little bit. That way it makes it a little bit easier because it's actually carved out with a little bit of a circular contour. The Land Cruiser, it's a little bit less in width, but as you're noticing, turn radius is still about three lanes. So it's not going to tick the box, making it easier there. Standard with this 2.4 liter turbo. So you're getting a little bit better MPGs. You are decreasing in towing and payload, but it's going to be a little bit more quiet too than that V8 engine. It doesn't feel that wide, but it does feel long because of how tall you are, even though we have decreased in the height of this vehicle opposed to the prior gen. And performance, You have it. Braking, they're actually enlarged opposed to the prior gen, so you're taking care of there. That's gonna take me to some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros is it keeps some of the iconic styling to the Land Cruiser. But on the flip side to that, we're decreasing in the size of the vehicle. For interior space, we're losing that third row. Now, I know traditionally you could get a two-door or a four-door for the original 1958, but when I'm going into the first edition, I would actually like to see it have a standard third row or at least an option for it with a little bit more power underneath the hood instead of giving all the vehicles the same trim level. The only thing different is the options in which you can go into the Land Cruiser, which is the mid trim, and you can pretty much get every feature that the first edition has with the savings. The pros to the vehicle, it's a lot more smooth, a little bit more quiet, 
you get the new Toyota Safety Sense, you get upgraded technology, you can go places that the old one couldn't because it is a lot smaller in the width as you're seeing me demonstrate this multiple times. And the seats are actually more comfortable here. Plus we get manual cushion extensions, but in on the con, we don't get it on the passenger side. The big problem that I have with this variant is not only it's a Toyota Tacoma powertrain, but then not optioning third row. And then in the cargo, we actually have air vents, grab handles, USB ports and cup holders, which are accounted for for the 12 cup holders that are found throughout the interior. Why do you need that when it's not a third row vehicle? I like that it's similar to the Lexus, but it keeps more of the traditional Land Cruiser style in the interior. You're not having gloss black everywhere. But then when I'm thinking rival perspective, should I option the Ford Bronco? Because I'm gonna have a little bit more interior space. But then this is going to be more comfortable. This is also going to be a little bit better in MPGs. Plus you can tow better with this. And when you're thinking the savings, they decreased in the price, which is a huge pro for the Land Cruiser. Because for a standard trim was near $80,000, $90,000. Now you get that to the top trim. It's hard to say that they didn't do a good job though with the Land Cruiser, because for an everyday use and to tackle jobs off road, you can still do that with this and you're getting a savings that trickles in. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like, and I'd like to thank Get All Stadium Toyota for giving, us, for giving us this 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser first edition for our car review.